and welcome to the Hopcast. Thanks for joining us, everybody. I'm Brad Chmielewski. My name is Ken Hunnameter. And on this episode, we have a couple pale ales, or we think we're both pale ales. <laughs> yeah, loosely described as, as pale ale for one. Um, we have a kind of a new offering from Southern Tier. Uh, it's their 2X1, mm-hmm. so it's a, a kind of a single varietal experimental type of beer that they're they're making. And then we have a Belgian pale ale from Penrose, their P2. Right, and Penrose recently opened up. We've featured them many a times. They need, yep. they yeah, they need less publicity from us, I think. But <laughs> we have some of their beer, so we're gonna drink it. <laughs> yeah, th- those guys are uh, are good buddies of ours, so uh, we like to drink their beer whenever we can because they're cool people. But most importantly, they make really good beer over there. Mm-hmm. So, wow, well, which one do you want to start with? Uh, let's start with the P2. This this two X one is is over eight percent. Christ, okay. So yeah. that might be a good finisher. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Big pale ale. Yeah. So uh, here we go. Penrose, P2. What happened? It's <laughs> a lot of head on that's this. That's some head right there. So this is, that's that's some stable head, too. That's like yeah. meringue. <laughs> there's like some really big bubbles in there, too. Yeah. Like it's like... I don't know, it just builds like a thickness, but then there's like big ones too, it's funny. I don't know what Tom's doing over there, but he's uh, he's certainly got the, the head down for sure. <laughs> he knows how to give that. <laughs> <laughs> well, nice we were... aroma on this. This is uh, a good mix of that Belgian yeast character and the and a, a good amount of hops too. Yeah. We were drinking this when we were at the brewery, right? Mm-hmm all them in the back there yes we were well, cheers let's see if the head gets out of the way it's slightly cloudy but yeah we got a little bit of the bottom of the bottle there too first pours out of the bottle were, were nice and bright and then uh kind of yeast at the bottom there let's give it a taste cheers that just gets out of the way oh yeah no parts to see that's nice. It has a nice spiciness to it. Very spicy. Um, a lot of uh, hops up front, and then finishes like very, very dry. Uh-huh. So not a not a whole ton of a lot going on with malt. Mm-hmm. It's kind of more about like the yeast and the hops, I think, for this one. Right. I like that. And what is it coming in like round six or five point four? Something. Yeah. Yeah. Good drinkable Belgian pale. Now this is pretty much their flagship. I think, right? This in the proto or the two in bottles yep. right now. Yep. And then they do a lot of uh, experimentation with other things, um, especially in the tap room. They're starting to get their barrel program together where they're doing um, a lot of Belgian style uh, acidic beers. Okay. Right. And I think they might even start doing some stuff with some bourbon barrels too, but we haven't, I don't think we've seen anything come yeah, out of yeah. that yet. So, okay. but they're, they have a lot of one-offs that go on in the tap room. Uh-huh. They have a small system as well as their their big, um, I believe it's a 40 barrel system, yeah. but they have kind of like a homebrew thing where they'll do small collaborations, uh, work with chefs, other breweries. So. And they just hired a new brewer. They, they did, right? yeah. Um, a gal. or is she like a just full? I think brewer. she's a full brewer. Okay. Uh, I think she's from the West Coast somewhere. And I'm forgetting the the brewery that she worked for, but uh, and I I'm also forgetting her name, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I haven't met her yet. But, uh, sounds like she's she's working out just fine over there. So that's awesome. that's it's good. Uh, you know, gets a little bit of the workload off of, of Tom, so yeah, he can he's having to run that whole back brewery by himself, and, and then go out and do events yeah. and all that stuff. So <laughs> he was uh, I think burnt out, and he probably still is. Like you know, knowing him, he's probably working just as much as he was before he okay. you know just moved on to other stuff that was less less important so. that he wasn't doing <laughs> so but those those guys are are, are killing it out there making yeah. great beer yeah so they're out in uh geneva right mm-hmm. and you can take the train in for chicago it's real easy to get to and yeah definitely check it out and these two beers already in package and they're haven't been open a year which is pretty good run for yeah them. yeah it's good and um it's even a a doable bike ride if you're if you oh, like yeah. to cycle that's a good brewery where you can get get some miles in 
and uh, check out our new spot. Definitely. Well, it looks like our head's pretty much gone, and we just have <laughs> beer left to finish up, so <laughs> let's take care of that and move on to this 2X. Cheers. All right, well, that, those are all gone. So yeah, we, uh, we had no problem finishing that P2. Okay. Delicious. Uh, but let's move on to this 2X1. 2X1, Southern Tier. Wow, I love seeing those really clear beers. Yeah, and we've had a string of them recently here yeah. on the show. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's always pleasant to see really nice looking beer like that. Uh, nice fluffy head on this one too. Right, a little, little darker than the P2. But yeah, not as fluffy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hard to be more fluffy than the P2. Yeah. So this beer, um, the whole concept behind it is that it's, uh, it uses one hop varietal and one type of, of malt. Right. So Do we know which ones they were? It was uh, mosaic hops and special pale malt. So they're going really, really simple. Uh, but they're trying to achieve complexity out of that simplicity, okay. if it makes any sense. All right. So, uh, yeah. It smells like very roasty and full. Yeah, it has. Uh, I was expecting more more of that mosaic hop aroma, but it it really does have a nice toasty characteristic. This is a, a beer that's like eight percent, so it's a pretty big beer. Yeah. I guess you usually see a lot of beers from Southern Tier kind of yeah. on the larger scale. Yes, they are. <laughs> You'll, so you've noticed the trend. Yeah, there's no <laughs> surprise there, I guess. <laughs> well, let's give it a taste. Yeah. Oh, okay. So more, more hop coming out in the flavor, I think, than the yeah. aroma. Uh, but still not like, not an overly bitter beer at all. And I think they're right. The the, the hops really kind of do play well with that toasty uh, malt character. Yeah, you, it almost goes back and forth where you get like the toast and then the hop bitter, and then the toast. They just like bouncing back and forth in your mouth. Yeah, and it's a a very floral hop type character. That's nice. The uh, and this is like a seasonal offering from them, and they're gonna do it, I guess, every year and try different hop and different malt combinations, right? So uh, that a new thing to look forward to from Southern Tier. Um, extremely drinkable for an eight percent beer. Yeah. I would not have guessed. I, I'm assuming this is a five percent beer. <laughs> and I, after a couple, you're on the floor. Like, yeah. <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs> but I'm gonna so get my boot back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fill the boot up with that eight percent beer. Yikes. <laughs> but Southern Tier just like sold part of their company, or like got in bed with the investment firm, or. Yeah, within this past week, the news came through that they sold just a portion of it to some investment um, banking York. firm out in New York or something okay. like that. Um, they also hired a, a new CEO, right? some dude that came over from Abst and before that AB. Okay. So it seems like the investment firm was probably just a, for money to get more of their beer out there. and Seems like it. Um, I know they have a, a beautiful brewery. Oh, uh, really? Okay. Fairly, fairly new. I thought they'd done a bunch of renovations. Got a nice tap room there, an outdoor area where they have uh, live bands play. Um, they're out in Jamestown, New York. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's a really, really nice looking brewery. They had just built a new brew house when I went out. God, was that maybe a year and a half ago or something like that? Oh, cool. So their brew house actually looked much like. Um, Kind of a cross between Bells and uh, Firestone Walker. Okay. So if you've seen the Bells Kalamazoo Brewery, where it's just kind of all wood in there and it's really like kind of cozy, mm -hmm. and then Firestone has those really nice tanks that are all glassed in, and you can just like look over the vineyards and stuff <laughs> like that. So it's kind of a cross between those two, but it's really really nice brewery. Um, so. Yeah, I, I'm not really sure what the deal was made for. Obviously, had to do with money, but right. we'll see. We'll see what what happens from that. If it's a move to kind of like prepare for another move, or I think it's just to grow. I don't think anyone's like Southern Tier makes bad beer. I don't want their beer. I guess when you see it, 
at this point they've been around for so long it's like oh whatever that's southern tier they're just they're there so you expect <coughs> to see them so maybe it's just to get them to markets they're not in yet and do other stuff yeah i mean it, it's got to be tough for them I, I think just because all their beers are so high in alcohol <laughs> <laughs> it's like i mean how many people i guess you know a lot of they're going for the beer geek type crowd mm -hmm. that that's very important to them is having bang for their buck right so i but that seems like a kind of a strange model you would you would think you'd go the opposite way brew? more drinkable oh. <laughs> uh go the other way with more drinkable stuff and you could sell more of it but it seems to be working out for them right. they sell a lot of that pumpkin and yeah people love that beer yep yep that's a that's one of those pumpkin beers that i do enjoy um, I like that one quite a bit. And uh, do you eat a pie or do you drink this beer? Kind of <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather have a beer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but they, yeah, they do a lot of really fun, um, kind of inventive beers. Okay. So this being one of them, I mean, it kind of drinks very beer-like actually, but uh, it's good to have those single varietals in there so you can kind of pick out things. Be like, uh -huh. oh, that's. Well, I know that there's only one hop in here, so I can get that characteristic of that mosaic hop or, or whatever it, the case may be mm -hmm. and apply it to your, your other beer drinking. True. And these are both, like, almost different ends of the pale ale. It just shows, like, how broad that beer category can be. Yeah, absolutely. Especially once you uh, start adding in uh, different yeast characters, or, or yeast strains, rather. Um, the Belgian strain and an American strain is going to be completely different. And then you can throw English and you can do uh, even lager strains for pale ales now mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So uh, fun stuff. Well, both excellent beers. Definitely give them a try if you can find either one yeah, of them. Good stuff. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Cheers.